Gospel is from Luke chapter 6. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them. And lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be called children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Do you recognize those words? From Jesus on the cross? Right, spoken to a, a really a horrible criminal. Uh, who, who is being executed for what he deserved next to Jesus Christ, right? I find those to be some of the most beautiful words in Scripture. I mean, think about what those words mean, right? He, he, he's telling, it's, there's, there's total grace. A, a man who lived really a wicked life comes to repentance, and in the last hours of his life, repents, it says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And, and what does Jesus say? You'll be with me in paradise. Forgiveness, grace, peace, the promise of heaven, everlasting life. In the immediacy of it, right? Today, you'll be with me. What a beautiful word that is, right? When, it, when a believer in Christ dies, when do they go to be with Christ? That very day. And then you have the picture of being with Christ, even before the resurrection, is called paradise. There are so many beautiful words. Those are some of the most powerful and beautiful words in Scripture. And yet, what about if you had been the family of someone who had been assaulted by this criminal? Right? Imagine, now the Bible doesn't tell us that there was family there, but imagine if, if you were the family of somebody who had been brutalized by this man, right? And you were there and you didn't know Jesus, but you heard Jesus speak those words to that criminal. What would you have thought? Maybe you would have thought, what? Who is this guy? Paradise? Give him hell! Who does this guy think he is? This is horrible. How can he promise him that? The truth of the matter is, if you don't know Jesus, there are a lot of things that he says that might offend you. And our lesson for today is one of those. Right? Jesus calls us not, he calls us to be here different than the world, different than the, than the way the people without Christ think, different than the values of the world, different a lot of times than what you'll see in movies right at the end of it for vengeance and revenge and, and how wonderful that is. 
Because today God calls us not to rehab, he's going to uncover a lot of our sinful reactions. And he doesn't call us to have always natural reactions, but reactions of mercy. And we're going to say today, see today that really the only way to do that and to act and to love others, and especially those who are opposed to us, is if we are first consumed by the love of Christ for us. So, if you go here, just, oh, there we go. Let me, let me go back. I just want to go back to the beginning. <clears throat> Jesus is speaking to those, he says here, to those who are listening, right? That would be us, his people. And, and he tells us, love, do good, bless, and pray. Now, most people would say, would agree, okay, those are good things to do, right? Bless, pray, do good. I mean, you even see commercials for this sometimes, right? Like commercials like pay it forward or random acts of kindness to a stranger and and how wonderful that is. And, And most people would agree, yeah, that's a good thing. I like this. I got no issues here. Yeah, love. They might not use the biblical definition of love, but yeah, love and do good, yeah. Right? You see strangers. Maybe even you see, you see poor people. Most people would agree, Jesus, I'm with you on that. That's good. Except, did you see who Jesus is telling us to do this to? Right? Uh, he says there, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. So think about that for a second. Okay, you're, you're a parent. Say you're a parent. You got a kid in, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, maybe high school. And your child is suffering emotionally because they are being viciously bullied verbally at school. God says, pray for them. Not, not just for your son or daughter, who's re- the victim of this, but for those who are doing this to them. Pray for them. Right? Bless those who curse. The, the, right? Like, get, give these people, like, honor. Like, bless them. Wish good for them. Right? When somebody, maybe it's on social media for some of you, maybe it's, like, to your face. When somebody curses or cuts you down, And your natural reaction is, okay, I'm going to one-up them. God says, speak kindness to them. Right? Speak love to bless them. Okay? Love your enemies. This isn't just a feeling of love, by the way, right? I mean, some, we can't always even change our feelings, but love is really an action that looks for the good of another. Right? Your enemies. For some, some of you, now I'm saying this without knowing most of you, but experience would tell you that sometimes enemies come from within even your own house, like we saw that with Joseph. Somebody that said something a while back that was harmful, somebody that ripped you off, somebody that right, did something bad to you and, and, and like, did something really bad, and maybe you have every reason to be upset with them, or maybe it's somebody at your job that did you wrong, or somewhere God calls you to love. That doesn't just mean like like have this emotion for them, but do what is best for them. And then he says, do good to those who hate you. Can you think of somebody in your life that hates you? I don't like being hated. Can you think of somebody? Have it in your mind. If, 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 you, if you struggle with this one, if you're like, I, I, you know, I know there's people that don't like me. I can't think of anyone that hates me. Now, then it, it would be good. We don't have these words here, but a couple verses before this, Jesus said this. He said, blessed are you when people hate you because of me. If you can't think of somebody that like, hates you right now, Jesus is saying, you know what? There's going to be people that hate you because of me, because of what I teach, because of what the Bible says. People that will look on you as evil because of me. Now, a reaction that we can very often have to that is, oh, 
well, uh, watch this, I, I'm going to try to make you look like a fool. And so sometimes people, right, like you see this on social media, will put something out there that's not beneficial or helpful to anyone, but they're blowing off steam. God says, do good to those who hate you. Look for opportunities to do good to them. And so you might say, oh, Jesus, that's a lot here. Are, are you serious? Uh, if, if that seems hard, listen to what he says now. He goes on. Look, okay, if you're there in verse 29, he says, If someone slaps you on a cheek, turn to them the other. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Hey, Jesus, are you talking about, like, if some, right, to almost be naked? Like, I should suffer that? Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Now again, most people would hear, do to others as you would have them do to them. Okay, I'm with you, Jesus. Good. But did you see the context in which he says that? When someone slapped you? Right? When someone keeps asking you for stuff? This is when somebody's taking your coat? Do to others as you would have them do to you. That's the context of what he's talking about there. Now we might hear this and be like, well, okay. Jesus, I mean, you're not really saying that I should be willing to suffer loss. Right, Pastor? I mean, come on, make, I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable here. Let, why don't you just kind of tell me what this really means so I don't actually have to change anything in my life? Uh, you're not going to get that here. Jesus is telling us to be willing to suffer loss. Now, maybe we need to realize we've got to take all of the Bible right. Does this mean that you should never, ever in your life resist someone if they're attacking you or your family or something like that? Well, we also realize that the Bible tells us to protect and provide for our, for right for our family and for those who others. So there are times when love for those around you would cause you to resist this, right? Because you, right, you love your enemy, you love others and everything. But, but again, the whole motivation, even in this, would be love. Love for those around you. But Jesus is, so, okay, Jesus isn't saying that you can never act in self-defense, or the, right, if somebody comes into your house during the middle of the night, oh, okay, here's my family, go ahead. No, because that would also require you, right, love for your family and all those things there. But again, the whole point is love. But Jesus is telling us to be willing to suffer personal loss. For his sake, motivated by love. It might seem, this might seem pretty impossible. Doesn't it? How do we do this? I mean, first of all, we got to admit, probably haven't always done this, if not even often. Um, go, let's go to the end of this here. He says, if you look verse the end of verse 35, he says, you'll be children of the Most High because he, God, is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Right? <clears throat> He's kind to the ungrateful and the, merc and the wicked. How in the world can we show love to those who want to mistreat us? To those who are ungrateful. We have to first realize the way that God is towards us. I mean, God put Adam and Eve, right? God put Adam and Eve in paradise. And, and then, right, they, they didn't listen to him. They listened to the devil. And, and what did God do? He went to them. And then they made some excuses. And so what did, what did God do? I will put enmity between you and the woman. I'm sending a savior. He took it on himself. You see this throughout the Old Testament, even the New Testament, but even in our lives, right? Like us who have been even materially blessed way beyond what is necessary for our lives, uh, way more than other countries and places in the world, and yet a lot of times we still think we're justified in being ungrateful and complaining. 
And, and we also know the way we're born into this world biblically isn't as friends of God, but against God, is, is wicked, and we have all these things coming out of us, and yet God is merciful to us, and he sent his son, Jesus. And, you know, all of these things that, that Jesus asks, look at that, if someone slaps you on the cheek, turn the other. Think of Jesus being slapped in the face, spit in the face, hit on the head. He's God. I mean, he could have just wiped them out. But he let them for you. Right? If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt from him. Look at Jesus on the cross, basically naked, and people taking his clothes and casting lots for them. He did this for you. Right? Give to everyone who asks. Doesn't he listen to our prayers? He emptied himself. He gave himself completely on the cross to give us forgiveness, peace with God, and joy. And that's what we have. All of the things that he tells us to do, he did. Your heavenly Father is merciful to you. And he has forgiven you. And he does forgive you. And he continues to forgive you. He is merciful beyond anything we could imagine. What a gracious God we have who did all of these things to save us. And so so God calls us then. You have received mercy. Live. And that mercy towards others, right? Jesus is calling us to have a love and a way of acting and behaving that is different than the world. I mean, he said that, right? All of these, all of these, he's like, if if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Everyone does that. Right? He says, even sinners do that. Like unbelievers. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. Right? I'm going to be kind to you because you'll be kind to me. I'm going to be, right? You are kind to me. I'm going to be kind to you. That's just what people do. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that, right? But love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great. Romans 12 talked about this too in what we just just read. But the way that Christians very often in history have made a difference in the world isn't through passing laws to protect Christianity. It's by loving their enemy. And, right, not by force, but by love and by the example, by by martyrs praying for those who are martyring them. Right? It, that's the way that the Christians have it. But, but sometimes, we got to admit, sometimes we love this way and we're taken advantage of. And sometimes people don't change. And sometimes we might ask, what's the point of showing love when people continue to act terribly towards us and towards others? And I don't see any change in mind. And God would just tell us, just leave it to me. You have a reward. It's worth it. Why is it worth it? Why is it worth it to love even if we would not see any difference or change in other people? One reason. Because Jesus rose from the dead. The fact that he rose from the dead means that we also will rise from the dead and which also changes our motivation that we don't live our lives to see right all of the things that God talks about right, in his word fulfilled right now. Maybe God will change people's hearts by your love so that you'll see it, and that would be great. But whatever it is in the way you live, just trust Christ because he has died for you, because he has rose from you, because he has given you those gifts in baptism, because he gives you his body and blood in the Lord's Supper. God just says it is worth it to live a life of mercy. Just trust me on this one. It's worth it. And so let's go back to the cross of Christ. You see, not only did he speak words of of love and forgiveness and eternal life to that thief on the cross, but even before that, as he was being crucified, do you remember the prayer? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. I mean, he's talking about forgiving these people who, who put him up and exposed him publicly, basically naked, right there on the cross, and who were ridiculing him, making fun of him, mocking him. He was loving his enemy. 
And as he hung up on that cross for six hours and died, the Bible tells us that a Roman centurion was there. And after seeing all of this, he said, Surely this man was a son of God. So in our lives, let's be consumed by the love of Christ. The only way that, that, that we're going to begin to even think the way that Jesus asks us today is if we first realize how we would be without Christ, what we deserve from him, and the immense love that God has for us. And as we are consumed by that love, then slowly God changes our mind and our attitudes to look to others, not for our own personal benefit, but simply as people to love. And we leave the results of that in the hands of our loving God. So let's be consumed by that love in our own life and in our dealings with others. Amen. 